Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. And I have a topic tonight that, you know, it has to be talked about because the NBA season is about to start and we are in the midst of preseason games. NBA season used to start like end of October, beginning of November. Now it starts in the next two weeks. So I think the first game coming up is like the like October 21st or something like that. I'm not 100% sure the exact date, which is sad considering I have season tickets to the Miami Heat. But let me check real fast when the first game is for the Heat, at least, for example. The Heat's first home, first home game is – I know they play tonight, but their first home game is on uh, – da, 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 where the hell did it go? We're backwards. It's on 10, 20, October 23rd. So they got preseason games until then. Um, one has been changed because there was a game that was supposed to be played on Thursday, but due to the Hurricane Milton that is coming through Florida in all due caution, downtown Miami floods like crazy. So there's no need to put fans in jeopardy over a meaningless preseason game or any game for that matter because Miami, downtown Miami area where the arena is is awful with flooding. That being said, the topic of, of this conversation is Bronny James. Bronny James is two games into his NBA career. <clears throat> and needless to say, he has been otherworldly horrendous. He's played two games, and he's been flat out trash in both games against the Suns. He was 0 for one in 13 minutes 0 for one from three, which is expected because he just can't shoot, which we saw in summer league, two rebounds, four turnovers, three fouls in 13 minutes, minus 16 while he was on the floor. He spent a good chunk of time on the floor with his father. And he committed at one point three turnovers in about three minutes. There's a podcast called Awful Coaching that shows and, and really depicts all the errors that Bronny is making. And, and the reality is, this is not a surprise. In fact, it was expected. And it's sad because people knew this was going to happen. Yet, the Los Angeles Lakers made a point to draft this young man un, or unearned, unearned. Um, and now that now you're seeing in your face that he might look semi decent at times in summer league, whereas in other times in summer league, he looked utterly horrendous, but this is not summer league. This is not, players who will never play in the NBA for the most part. And if you look at his first game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, he played 16 minutes. He was one of six, of one from three. He had three block shots, minus 12 on the floor, one rebound, one assist, one turnover. So I'm sure someone will say, as the ESPN made a point to do, is show the block shot he had. And that's cute and all. But if you go, I'm not, and I'm going to link awful coaching's links on Bronny James in these first two games here because people really need to see how bad this is. It's not a matter of can he make a shot. It's not a matter of if he can't shoot from the perimeter. I think we've pretty much ascertained that he cannot shoot from the perimeter. Just he just can't shoot, and he is a massive matchup issue for the Lakers if he was to actually play in real games. Quite honestly, he should not make the team. But because of who he is and who the last name on the back of his jersey and the fact that his father is LeBron, he will be on this team on opening night. And the fact that they paid him $8 million over four years. So he will absolutely be on the roster when the season starts. How much he, will he play? That remains to be seen. Will they start him? I would hope to God not. But he's going to play opening night. Mark it down. I don't know how long he will stay on the roster. 
I don't know if they'll ever ship him to the G League, but the G League is where he belongs. And even in the G League, he is not even ready for that. So you have an article that came out today or yesterday. Was it yesterday? What's today? Today's it? Yes, today. The article that came out today, this morning, in fact, titled, Set up for failure. What lies ahead for Bronny James and the Los Angeles Lakers? This, I don't want to call this a hit shot, a hit piece, but it's a pretty damaging hit piece. The, the writer is Baxter Holmes, ESPN senior writer. I don't know who he is. I don't really care who he is, but he is stating things that are being told to him by league exec league executives who, of course, are too much of a bunch of pussies to put their name on that shit. And I will say this. I'll put my name on anything that I say. You'll never hear me say, don't use my name. If I said it, use my name. Just make sure you quote me properly. The fact that there are ES, not ESPN, but league, league executives and senior executives on different basketball teams who are afraid to say, yo, this kid just ain't that good. It's kind of embarrassing if you ask me. I wish they would have the stones to put their name on what they say. Because even for him, Bronny, he he hasn't been here. He hasn't been here, but I think every adult, and this is where I'm going to use the word "deserves" over "earned." I think every adult deserves the respect of if you're going to say something about them that is this, for lack of better words, Shaming, I guess, would be a decent word. Disrespectful. It's not disrespectful because it's facts. Remember, what we practice here is facts over feelings. We're not here to sugarcoat. We're not here to pussyfoot around. It's facts over feelings. And these are facts. Ronnie James averaged five points per game in college. He was a backup. He couldn't shoot from the perimeter at USC. The team was terrible. In fact, one of the worst in the country. Definitely one of the worst power five teams in the country. He was a backup to a guy who should have been drafted ahead of him, but instead wasn't drafted instead of him, in, in lieu of him. So we start off with this part right here of this story where basically you have nobody, according to Chris, according to Rich Paul, nobody pressured Bronny James to go pro, Rich Paul said. Bronny had a choice to stay at USC. He had a choice to transfer somewhere else, or he had a choice to go pro. Now, I have problems with that statement because your his father's, arguably his father's best friend, or one of his father's best friends, definitely in his inner circle, definitely someone that Bronny has been around the duration, majority of his life. Rich Paul has been a figure in LeBron's life as long as Bronny's been alive, for the most part. And you would expect at least the sense that Rich Paul, along with LeBron, would sit down with Bronny and say, bro, you're not ready. And that's the biggest thing that I don't like about the situation, is that what it seems like is that this he basically made a decision and they said, okay, fine. Whereas a, a mentor, someone who guides you is going to say, look, 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 let's hold, let's, let's pump the brakes for a second. You had a heart attack before the season started. Before the season started, you had a heart attack. You never got your feet truly wet at the college level. You didn't get the full opportunity to work out with your team and you kind of came in a little bit late. So your numbers look like trash. You look like you really can't play ball if you base it off of your college career, which is like 20-something games. Now, 
People can go back and say, oh, well, yeah, he was a McDonald's All-American. No, the hell he wasn't. Pump the brakes. He was a McDonald's All-American because his father finagled his way into the damn game. Because there's not a person on earth that would sit here and look at Bronny James, the player, in high school and sit here and tell you that he was a top 30 player in his class. But rankings said otherwise, which is why rankings are not believable. You can't trust them. They're bullshit. They're paid for. Now, I know this because I've covered high school basketball. I did recruiting. I sold recruiting reports. I've watched Bronny play. I've seen him play against the competition he played against. Yes, it was a high level of competition. He was never the best player on his own high school team, even as a senior. He was never a point guard. He was listed at 6'4". He's really 6'1". He doesn't have great lateral movement. He's a athletic in terms of he can jump out the gym, but he's not like otherworldly athletic besides that. No lightning first step, no great jump shot. He's not some incredible finisher around the rim in traffic. Like there's nothing about his game that you would have seen in high school and said, surefire pro. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's why college exists. Is so guys can develop themselves and get better. And there's no what no, there's no reason to say he couldn't have gotten better. Now, do I think he's a pro even going through three, four years of college? Probably not. That's just my opinion. Because I don't see how how I don't see how much better he can truly get realistically, because he's never played point. And unless he's gonna play point, he is nothing more than a tweener. In fact, forget tweener, a Combo guard who can't shoot and can't pass. Like People are going to sit here and say, oh, he's LeBron's son, so he has a high basketball IQ. That's not how high basketball IQ works. If that was the case, then you know what? Michael Jordan's son should be an automatic 30-point-per-game scorer because you know what? He's Michael Jordan's son. That's not the case. So if you look at the different things, so you look at the summer league, he averaged seven points and shot 32.7% from the field. Three and a half boards, one and a half assists in six games. He stunk. He stunk. I think he had one good game. But again, again, I'm going to point put that link for awful announcing so you can check out how he breaks him down. He doesn't backdoor cut properly or when he's supposed to. He doesn't go all the way to the basket to draw defenders. He doesn't seem to know the things that you should know if you are a pro. Or if you're good enough, maybe maybe that IQ that they talk about it in there. Maybe it's really not there, because the things that awful announcing shows, which I I'm sorry, it's I'm sorry, awful coaching, awful coaching, wrong name, awful coaching. The thing that awful coaching shows, he doesn't seem to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it at any given point, whether it's on offense, defense, it doesn't matter. He takes a bad three instead of, instead of running off the screen properly. He doesn't know how to run off a pick and roll. Like it's broken down piece by piece on awful coaching, and it's a great piece of work that that man puts together. I don't know his name, but great piece of work he puts together because it's staring you right in the face. If I actually had the ability to do that type of editing and the time to do that, I'd do it myself because I can watch his game and break it down and show you just how bad, you know, how bad it is. I mean, there was a play where he should be sprinting down the floor. He's jogging. If he sprints, he has a layup or a dunk. Instead, he's jogging. And he seems to always do what these young kids do now is they jog to they go to the three-point line. You cannot shoot, Bronny. You going to the three-point line ain't a good idea. You need to be moving without the ball. You can't shoot. So here's what some other stuff has been said about him by executives. Others around the NBA, even those who praise Bronny as a person and boast about the numerous intangibles he possesses that they'd want in a player, remain skeptical. I don't know what intangibles he possesses. Does he know how to run down block shots like his dad? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he does. Great. Does he play hard the entire time? No, because I've watched these games. He's not going to full motor. He's not sprinting on the floor for he's not he's not doing the things that I would consider playing hard at all times. Is you know, it's here's the quote: the expectations 
for Bronny by the fan base and by LeBron and Rich Paul are not commensurate with the reality of his game. One Eastern Conference executive said, if they had any real idea of how far away Bronny is, they just would not have done this. Again, my comment to this is put your fucking face on this shit. Put your name on it. Don't spew this and not say who you are. Why you got why you got to be, you know, uh you un, um, anonymous I said you Dennis, anonymous. Why would you be anonymous? Here's another one. Here's another one right here. Another comment from an exec. You're set up for failure. One Eastern Conference scout who has evaluated Bronny for years. So, so scout. It's like, what's the expectation here? Again, I don't know what the expectation is myself. That's right here. I don't know what the expectation is. I know what I've watched. I know that I don't think he's that good. Look, for amongst lay people, sure, he's fantastic. Amongst NBA players and professional basketball players, NBA players, he's not one. Pros in other leagues, not really. Not really. He, he doesn't have it here yet. He doesn't have the ability yet. Here we go. This is um this is another scout. This is the same scout. He also says, I wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be doing my job as an evaluator if I didn't write a report. He's not it, he said Bronny is LeBron's son, and if any he is anything remotely close to the once in a generation player that his father is, then Bronny at the very least warranted a look. But as the scout watched Ronnie, he began to take notes. He he was humble. He comes across as a humble, nice kid. I'm not talking about the kid as a person. He comes across as a nice kid. Seems he seems de- man- manageably well adjusted, considering he grew up a billionaire. He grew up the son of a billionaire father. Like most kids who grow up with billionaire fathers are douchebags. He doesn't come across that way, which is great, and I think that's a wonderful thing. He doesn't come across he. He does not come across the way Shador Sanders comes across. And Deion Sanders does not have a fraction of the money that LeBron James has. So let's get that clear. Bronny James comes across as a well-adjusted, decent, nice kid. Well, adult. He's 19 years old. He's an adult. He, he, he appeared to be coachable, played unselfishly, that he had the reputation of having a strong work ethic and a high basketball IQ, which I question because I don't know. I've watched him play. I don't find what he does to be high basketball IQ. And the fact of the matter is he never played point guard in high school. Shooting guards are not typically high basketball IQ players. <laughs> Most of them aren't. But, you know, they're just looking to shoot. The best ones are, of course, MJ, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant. But a lot of the shooting guards in the NBA are just, they go out there and try to score. <clears throat> he was a he was a well-built, he's well-built built physically and noted that he plays hard in the right way, that he was a good teammate, cared and had great character, he loved the game. But it, the report did not say that he was an NBA prospect. At best, he was a secondary one, someone you have on your radar but not a priority. He was lacking talent. Was he an NBA player? Not right now, the scout said, echoing multiple other front office executives and scouts. Would Bronny ever be an NBA player? The scout wasn't sure, nor were those same league sources. And then also, of course, what complicates complicates matters is his medical history. He had a he had a congenital heart defect. So we really don't know. And then, and then, then there's chit, chit chat about wanting to emulate Derek White and Drew Holiday and Davion Mitchell. Man, go look at what those dudes did in college, and that's what pisses me off when it shows that people are so tone deaf to reality. How can you compare yourself to a guy who? I mean, I think Derek White averaged like 18 a game in college. Let me confirm how many Derek White averaged a game in college. Derek White, one for one, he played, 
you know, did one year as a freshman. It was, a, it was a, maybe I think the wrong person. I, I thought he ever did have a good. Yeah, eighteen point one. Derek White, his one year in college, eighteen point one point. 18.1 points per game. He shot 51% from the field, 40% from three, 81% from the line, four and a half assists, four rebounds, one and a half blocks. You thought you were that guy? Did you really think with a straight face that you were that guy? Derek White? Come on now. Drew Holiday. And that was at Colorado. Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday played one year of, of Pac-10 basketball. He played 27 minutes. He averaged he averaged eight and a half points, four assists, four boards, one and a half steals, a half a block. He shot 45% from the field, 31 point, 31% from three, 73%, 72.5% from the free throw line. Drew Holiday has obviously morphed into one hell of a player. And Drew Holiday was also a projected first round pick forever. He was a, he was the seventeenth pick in the draft. Bronny was barely in the draft. Let's not let's not forget that uh, what what was what was UCLA's record in Drew Holiday's one year? Um, they were they were. Two, 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 two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they were 26 and nine around there, if I'm counting correctly. 26 and nine. That's a good team. USC stunk. And then finally, we have Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell, I think, played, I'm pretty sure he played more than one year. Davion Mitchell played three seasons of college basketball. He had one year he sat out where he, on, a, on a transfer. He shot a career 47% from the field, 40, 39% from three, um, 68% from the line. He averaged 12 points per game. He averaged 14 his last season, five and a half assists. Davion Mitchell is a baller. He shot 51% his his, uh, his, senior, his junior year at Baylor and 45% from three. So you're comparing yourself to guys that were ballers in college and you were on a trash can team and you stunk. It, it, it's one of those things where I get it. Bronny has a dream and it's beautiful. And I hope he lives up to his dream. And I hope he gets the – I'm not going to sit here and say I hope he gets the opportunity. I hope he earns the opportunity to live up to his dream. But he's not earning shit playing in the NBA because he's not ready for the NBA. He just isn't. He just isn't. Several front office executives and scouts privately and quickly denounced it as a mistake to stay in the draft. He needed more time to develop, that he wasn't ready for the professional game. The whispers quickly crescendoed into conventional wisdom. He should have stayed in school, one Western Conference executive said. No doubt about it. In a normal world, he would have been a really good four-year college player, one Eastern Conference scout said. For this whole thing to have even made it this far is surreal. Another Western Conference executive said, and analytically, if you just had the numbers on a page and had no name attached to it, which is what I have said, if you took away his name and just put those numbers on the page, there's no way you're drafting him. No way. In a vacuum, you're not drafting him. He doesn't project in any way, shape, or form to be an NBA player. His measurables don't project as an NBA player. He's 6'1". There's literally nothing about him on paper if no name is attached to it that makes this make sense. Other executives and scouts said they didn't think Bronny was good enough to be drafted even late in the second round, but understood the allure. He was LeBron, someone that carried enormous weight, but not necessarily in a bad way. One Eastern Conference executive said it's not just the name. It's not just that he's LeBron James' son. It's that he was raised by LeBron James. See, that's the bullshit. So what? 
Marcus Jordan was raised by Michael Jordan. If anybody takes a gamble on Bronny James, they're getting the most incubate, incubated basketball player ever. I would disagree. I would say that he's been the most analyzed basketball player ever, even more than his father, because people have been watching him since he was 12. And in fact, he's been nitpicked for so many years. It's clear as day that his game has not morphed into what they hoped it would be because he was a pretty damn good 14-year-old, and they expected him to be a fucking superstar. And he has not come anywhere near that projection. He's nowhere near that projection, whereas his younger brother, who was short and then all of a sudden sprouted to six foot six, has a more body, more ready, more professionally built. I mean, he's slim as hell, but he has the frame to become a lot bigger. I mean, six six, he's already taller. Of course, he's not going to embarrass your franchise ever. He's going to work his fucking ass off. But what LeBron James will never, but that's, but that's what LeBron will never tolerate as any intel. His kid's not a hard worker. I, I, I gather that and I grant that. But this isn't about that. This is about being good enough to play in the NBA. And he's not. He just isn't. So if you, I mean, you can. They say there are great guys in the G League, but they do not want to be in the G League, one Western Conference scout said. They want to be in the NBA, and some of whom are in their mid to late 20s, which means they're grown-ass men. All of them are trying to put food on their table for their families. That's not something that LeBron James is doing. He lives in his dad's house probably still. I'm, I, I wouldn't have moved. Are you kidding? I'm going to move out of that palace? Why would I do that? I'll let him keep paying the bills. Shoot, he's 19 years old. Yeah, let's not act like he's an adult. He, why would he even move out of the damn building? I hope he didn't move out of his parents' house. All of them are trying to put food on their table for their families and whatever that takes. They're going to do it. I think his last name will be thrown out the window. I'm hoping that that's the case because he needs to learn. He needs to he needs to come up the right way. Because right now, people say he could be a 3 and D specialist. I don't think he's that good of a defender. He's six foot one. If you watch him in these all co- awful coaching videos, his defense stinks. It's not as good as you think. Like, you've... People have brainwashed themselves because of LeBron James to think a certain way. This is a scathing, scathing piece. And like I said, let me see what it says. The worst possible situation for him to, for him to develop is being with the – I mean, I would think it was with the Lakers, but – um. There's all kinds of questions from this article, basically. If I was on a Lakers staff, I would do anything to not be the one tasked with developing Bronny. Hell, I mean, I agree with that because he's not going to make tangible progress with that will show up in good stat lines or anything. Even if you do a good job getting him better, his performance would be a disappointment to the fans. I think it'll be more of a challenge for them t- the team that drafts him than it will be for him. Look, end of the day, this article, I wish people who talk – would put their name on it. That's all I got to say about that. If you're going to talk, put your name on it. But the fact of the matter is, Bronny James is not an NBA player. All you have to do is watch two games of preseason basketball amongst players who are competing for real jobs. Remember, those guys in summer league are not guys competing to ma- – well, they're hoping – these guys. those guys in summer league are primarily competing to get an invite to camp. They're trying to get invited to camp. We're talking about make the roster. Most of those guys, if any of them make the roster, some might show you and shock you and make the roster, but a position and spot that would be otherwise otherwise for one of those guys is being taken up by Bronny James. So if I'm a guy... I don't want to go to the Lakers. I don't want to be on the Lakers situation in which I'm not one of those fringe guys. Cause I know that if, unless I am a thousand times better than him. And even if I am, I still might not get a look. I still might get sent to the G league because he's Bronny James. So we'll see what happens. These last few preseason games, I want to link those awful coaching videos because I, I think you should see them. If, if you're really interested, take a look at them. You can even watch them and fast forward. But you're going to see so many holes. <sighs> not very good. Just not very good. Not right now. And that's why he should have stayed in school.
But that's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Sure, like, subscribe. Remember, this is where we keep it's facts over feelings. I gotta adjust that so it sounds and flows well. I'll see you soon. Come on now.